Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another standard game video. Today we're taking a look at a mono red aggro deck updated with a ton of new cards from Dominaria United, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, I'm also playing two copies of Jaya, Fiery Negotiator. The new 4 mana Planeswalker starts out at 4 loyalty and has 4 different loyalty abilities. The plus 1 makes a 1 1 red monk creature token with prowess, meaning it gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn whenever we cast a non creature spell, so that includes our burn spells like Play with Fire, dealing 2 damage for 1 mana and the Lightning Strike reprinted, dealing 3 damage for 2 mana at instant speed, but it also triggers off casting enchantments like Kumano, another staple in red aggro decks, as well as additional copies of Jaya. Then the minus 1 can provide a bit of card advantage, exiling the top 2 cards of our library, we get to choose one that we can play this turn, so that also includes lands if we haven't played one yet. The minus 2 gives us a bit of removal, especially if we already have an established board with a bunch of tokens perhaps, as we get to choose target creature and opponent controls, and then whenever we attack this turn, Jaya deals damage equal to the number of attacking creatures to that single creature. And then a minus 8 can also be game winning, although it doesn't come up very often, as you're often using the minus 1 repeatedly to provide card advantage. Then we're also playing the full set of Defiler of Instinct, part of the rare Defiler cycle in Dominaria, and this is one of the more exciting ones for Constructed. A 4 mana 4 4 Phyrexian Kavu with First Strike, and as an additional cost to cast a red permanent spells, we can pay 2 life to replace a red mana symbol. So visualizing it, it's basically replacing a mana symbol with a Phyrexian mana symbol, which can be quite powerful, especially if we can cast a bunch of 1 drops after playing a Defiler of Instinct. And then whenever we cast a red permanent spell, the Defiler also deals 1 damage to any target, so great for finishing off any 1 toughness creatures, can also deal damage to a larger creature so the Defiler can maybe attack past it thanks to first strike, and can also go face to maybe burn out the opponent. And Defiler's even better if we can give it haste, thanks to a Reckless Stormseeker, a nice leftover from Innistrad standard, a 2-3 Werewolf, saying at the beginning of combat on our turn, a creature gets plus 1 plus so and haste until end of turn, so it can give itself haste as well, but following it up with a Defiler on turn 4 is also excellent. Now we do have to watch out for Cutdown, which is a 1 mana answer to Stormseeker, so that doesn't really line up all that favorably for us, but if it ever switches to Nighttime, the Slasher becomes even better. Then we're also playing the full set of Phoenix Chick, another new addition from Dominaria, and another 1-drop we can potentially play after playing our Defiler of Instinct on turn 4. A 1-1 one -one with Flying and Haste cannot block, so it's only turning sideways. And then we can also potentially get it back from our graveyard if we're attacking with 3 or more creatures. If we pay double red, then it will come into play tapped and attacking with an extra counter on it, although in testing the deck it hasn't really happened yet, so that doesn't come up very often. Then we're also playing the full set of Arada's Firebrand, a 3-1 Human Warrior that when it attacks can prevent something smaller from blocking, and we can also pump it up for 5 mana in a mono red deck, giving it plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn, and we can activate it at instant speed, so that's another way to boost up its power to prevent something larger from blocking potentially. Then we're still playing the full set of Bloodthirsty Adversary as a nice hasty 2-drop, especially nice after dropping a turn 1 Kumano so we can attack for 3 right away, and then in the late game we can essentially kick it to give it additional counters and to replay some of our burn spells out of the graveyard. Also great synergy with our Defiler as we can now maybe cast it with Kicker even if we only have 4 lands in play, as we can just pay 2 life in addition to the 4 mana and get back one of our burn spells. And then we're also playing two copies of Squee, a 2-2 with haste, that when it attacks makes a 1-1 goblin token that's also tapped and attacking, so a nice way to go wide to set up Jaya's minus 2 ability, and Squee also helps us go wide against sacrifice effects like Liliana of the Veil vale and Invoke Despair, as we can now easily sacrifice a 1-1 token instead. And then topping off our curve we can also play Sheevan Devastator as another mana sink, X and a red for a flying haste creature that enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. It's also pretty nice alongside Defiler as we can now spend one more mana casting our Devastator basically. So that's another nice curve topper if we're flooding out a bit. And that's one of the main concerns of Mono Red nowadays is not having your creature land in the mana base anymore. Still have Crucible that can be channeled but it does not really compare to having a Den of the Bugbear that we can activate late game. So flooding is a concern but then again if we don't play enough lands we won't be 
able to play some of our more powerful 4 drops. Another card we could be playing is Thundering Raichu at 4 mana, so we're trying out Defiler of Instinct instead. Another card that could pair quite nicely with Defiler is Hammer Hand, as a 1 mana aura that we can play for 2 life if we play Defiler on turn 4 to give it haste, attack right away and also prevent something from blocking. So that's another card you could easily consider if you're playing with Defiler of Instinct in your mono red deck. But yeah, we'll see how the deck fares here, so let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems quite promising. Perfect curve of 1-drop, 2-drop, Stormseeker to maybe enable Defiler as well. Opponent on a green deck. And I still like uh, Firebrand here. Still nothing from our opponent, so... We're gonna take a beating. Take 7 down to 11. And the land would be lovely. Jewel Thief makes a treasure. There's our land. So we can play Defiler. And then I could either pump Firebrand so Jewel Thief can block, hit them for what would be a 7 here. Or I can give Defiler haste, attack with all, they block Stormseeker, take 7, 8, 9, and then Kumano finishes off Jewel Thief. Kind of like that idea as well. Or actually we can just go face since their opponent's at 2. One from Defiler, one more from Kumano. Enough to close out the game. Awesome, turn 4 kill here, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, our hand seems pretty decent. Kumano into Adversary. Couple burn spells to back them up. And hopefully turn 3 Stormseeker as well. Opponent on a blue deck, Squee, could also be great here. And hit for 3. Unless, opponent might have a bounce spell here. Fading Hope. Okay, pretty effective, removing our counter in the process. So that's the tempo play they needed. Just replay Adversary since we're stuck on two. And another Fading Hope could be in our future. Okay. Get in for two. Got six points of burn in hand, couple haste creatures. So it's just about converting that damage before our opponent takes hold of the game. And uh, either Squee or Stormseeker would both be reasonable. I guess we'll go with uh, Squee here. Gets countered. And getting Squee countered means we can still get it back out of the graveyard, whereas turn 4 they could maybe exile it with a Wandering Emperor, which uh, would get rid of Squee permanently. Okay, so now Stormseeker attack seems fine, even though a Wandering Emperor is a concern. Get the Day and Night Cycle started, and Fateful Absence kills it. At least future Copies might still be quite effective once it switches to Knight, as the opponents are likely to cast many spells in their main phase. And there we go, there's another one. That resolves. Now, if we want to play around Wandering Emperor, I could just pump Etching instead of Slasher, which I don't hate, although I also don't want to give my opponent any unnecessary time to a leverage Bank Buster or maybe play another card draw spell, but all respect to Wandering Emperor here. And there it is. They could also make a Samurai to block, and still keep it around, but we'll trample over for two. And then Firebrand can prevent a Samurai from blocking as well. Opponent's got one card left. Let your blade do the talking. All land is good. So 
So I'll play Firebrand. Put an upkeep stop in case we want to upkeep. Cast a play with fire since I don't really want to cast one main phase and switch it back to day. Send these face. And should they have another Emperor in hand, I also don't want to waste a play with fire on the current one. Alright, they've got another. Probably exiling Slasher here. Nope, making another token. So, if that's the case, they may be trying to block our uh, Firebrands, which would still trample over. But then next turn they can minus Emperor and Exile Slasher. So I think what we'll do here is kill the Tutu that can block. Must protect the people. Or is her opponent maybe trying to crew Bankbuster? Alright, that could also work. In that case, I probably just double play with Fire Bankbuster. They will still be able to minus Emperor Exile Slasher. That's the concern. So it may be the case that I just want to kill Emperor and then finish off Bankbuster after they block Slasher. Lots of options. Um, if I kill Bankbuster, I also get rid of their card draw engine. And they're kind of forced to minus Emperor next turn on Slasher to an extent, so that it will be back uh, to daytime, so it's a little bit less threatening. But this seems fine. Get them to four, and uh, play with fire, and a kicked adversary can maybe close out the game. Opponent's gonna draw a card. And I imagine Emperor's gonna minus two, no? Just makes another 2-2 two, two token instead. Back to night time, and another Firebrand looks amazing here. Can prevent two creatures from blocking now. And uh, could hang on to play with fire, could play adversary, it's about the same. And our opponent explodes, awesome, at least two damage is gonna go through. And play with fire can finish them off. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and is a little awkward with double squee, but one is likely to die. So I'll try it. Turn one swamp. Squee does line up nicely against the Liliana of the Veil, potentially. Underdog. I could kill, although I'm actually fine just trading a squee for it. Although then they could eat a 1 1 and then edict squee. So I guess we'll still be mine efficient here. And then next turn, maybe Defiler as our first move. And really hope our opponent doesn't have Shieldred, because that's one of those cards that's just incredibly hard to beat. Trespasser is also annoying. So I don't think we're attacking into it. Can play Defiler, or we can play Jaya. Defiler also lets me play Etching, so I can actually finish off Trespasser. Yeah, I guess we'll give that a shot. So that's gonna cost two life and a card. So quite pricey. Hang on to Jaya. But at least we're on the board. With a Defiler. And so no, there's Shieldreds. Yeah, that one's rough. So I can play Jaya dealing one damage to Shieldred, so Defiler can attack. I can deal three damage to Shieldreds with Jaya's minus two. So that almost kills it, but not quite. And Squee we can't bring back yet. So it's probably Jaya and then use the plus one or minus one, make a monk or go digging. And I guess we'll go digging for another spell and use the Phyrexian mana. So I have more mana available to cast whatever we exile. And then if I deal damage to Shieldreds, I can attack with Defiler, which may be worth it. I came to talk, but if you'd rather fight, 
and we found play with fire and firebrand. So play with fire is not enough at this point. So we'll grab a firebrand and then attack with just defiler. And Firebrand can go upstairs. Also gets a counter, which is nice. Okay, if our opponent's got a Meat Hook Massacre, it's probably game over. Invoke Despair would also be rough. And yep, there it is. So we have to sack a creature, a Planeswalker, and an enchantment. At least it didn't draw any cards to gain life off Shieldred, but not what we wanted to see. So we lose two. Now I can pump Firebrains, which will prevent Shieldred from blocking. And then how much damage do we deal? 10, 11, so Exaxes. Wow, did we actually beat a Shieldred? I can't believe it. Opponent had a totally functional draw, but Monored gets it done thanks to the help of Defiler of Instinct. Awesome. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Kumano into Firebrand on two. And then hoping for a couple lanes. Devastator also wouldn't mind a couple extra lanes. Plays well with Defiler, as we can essentially cast it for one more. Okay, Harvester. I think I still am tempted to play Firebrand. And then if they kill it with Harvester, so be it. But if I Lightning Strike here, I'm wasting the counter from Kumano. And they might have other plans for Harvester. Right, Braids. We can Lightning Strike. Hit for two. And next turn we have to decide between Defiler and Jaya. Double Jaya is interesting. Could also use her minus two ability to kill Epicure, although it could be awkward if her opponent has removal in hand for etching. So if her opponent's holding Infernal Grasp, would be an extra reason to play Planeswalker instead of Defiler. Although if Defiler sticks around, we can cast a Jaya for 3 mana next turn, dealing 1 damage as well. So close call. I think I'll go with Jaya since we're not under a ton of pressure. And then we can make a Monk token with it to help protect her. And use it for card advantage next turn, maybe finding a land. There's the Infernal Grasp. Still probably going to play Jaya over Defiler, even though now it's closer. Since making the 1-1 protects us against a future Liliana of the Veil, which they very well may have. Another Braids. Puts us to 15, but now Defiler should be pretty awesome. Jaya can go digging with the minus 1. See what it turns up. Land and Kumano. Okay, so how much damage can I deal here? If I play Defiler, play Kumano, not quite enough to kill Braids, even if we play a Devastator. So we're probably just gonna take Kumano and then finish off Epicure. And I don't have to take any damage. Well, actually, it's interesting. I could pay the life so I can cast a Devastator to finish off Braids if they block the Monk token. Which may be worth it. Sure. And at the very least get some more damage in. And I think I'm fine trading damage at this stage. Put on blocks. Okay, so Devastator for one. 
kind of an interesting play here, but able to finish off braids. You don't really imagine casting a 1-1 Devastator when putting it in your deck, but the flexibility is nice. Another Harvester and a Lightning Strike. So Jaya could minus two, potentially kill Harvester. I think we're still more interested in the card advantage here, so we'll use her minus one ability. Finding Adversary, perfect. And there's a Lightning Strike in the graveyard we can replay. And no real reason to deal myself more damage. So we'll pay three, get back Lightning Strike. Killing Harvester. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Another great showing of Defiler. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a fine hand. Good curve of creatures with a tiny bit of interaction. And Stormseeker also pairs quite nicely with Defiler, which lacks haste. Opponent on a Grixis deck and Lancer Shredder. Sadly, we cannot finish off with Play with Fire. And uh, Adversary would also get blocked, so could play Kumano here, or we could save it until after we play Defiler. I think playing Kumano now is fine, and then next turn Stormseeker getting a counter means it cannot be taken out by a cut down, which would otherwise be a concern. Shredder hits us for one. And I think we'll go for Stormseeker here, even though Infernal Grasp could be a reason to diversify. Opponent's got a counterspell, sadly. And Shieldred's definitely a problem card for us. So we'll play a Defiler, and then next turn we can try and come up with maybe enough damage to take out Shieldred's. March is gonna get rid of our Defiler, sadly. So now our best bet is probably to block Shieldred and finish her off with a Play With Fire. As her opponent goes digging with Indulgence, also gaining 4 life in the process. Not what we want to see as the mono red deck. So we'll block, let first strike damage happen, and then cast play with fire. It's not a permanent spell, so it doesn't trigger Defiler, but still a good enough answer. Okay, and then now. It might be time to unleash some spells. Although we have to be careful, since if we cast too many spells, it's going to grow Ledger Shredder. Stormseeker with Phyrexian Mana. Damage to Ledger Shredder. And then, once again, take two. Opponent discarding more counter spells. And we can pay to replay Play with Fire. Which will exile Ledger Shredder thanks to etching. Okay. Stormseeker can give itself haste. And turn our team sideways, although there might be 
a meat hook massacre in our future to wipe the board. As our opponent cycles. Just another indulgence for now. Okay. Can play Phoenix Chick. Just gonna cast it for a single red. One to the opponents. And we'll uh, give the chick one extra power, sure. Opponent is at three life. Cycles a Xander's Lounge. And hope to dodge a massacre. Just a Luncher Shredder, that's fine. And a Shieldritz. Okay, so that's gonna put us to two after we draw. And a Lightning Strike can finish off our opponent, although an all-out attack might have done it too. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Opponent red-green with turn one Kumano. So we can maybe kill their two drop. Although if it enters with a counter, it may be too large. Ah, that one we can still take out, luckily. And then we're holding two copies of uh, Crucible, which could also get a little awkward here. But for now, between Firebrand and Adversary, which do we prefer? Might be Firebrand first. As we can maybe play this for five later, getting back, play with fire. And allows us to attack past etching, so it doesn't trade for squee, which we don't want to have exiled. Okay, defiler is nice. Play squee. And attack. But a lightning strike is going to exile squee thanks to etching. Still hit for three. Now we also don't have a legendary creature in play to enable channel, which is a shame. And partners is scary. Great reason to splash green in your aggro deck. Stormseeker we can play at least. And pump itself. Prevent partners from blocking. And get our opponent down to 7. Could still use Crucible as kind of a Lotus Petal by floating mana and then still playing Defiler. Which we very well may do next turn if we're not dead. But it looks like we're pretty dead here and the partners could have dealt even more damage had they pumped it with a Stormseeker. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands got potential. Couple removal spells to clear a path for Squee and then Defiler. Opponent Junt Colors. And I'll play Kumano. So Squee will get an extra counter. And our opponent won't be able to cast a cut down to kill it right away. Ooh, Terra Sunder. Getting rid of our enchantment, fair enough. So yeah, they could still have an answer to Squee here for one mana. Let's hope they don't. Alright, we get to connect and our token protects us from uh, Liliana. Meadog Massacre still works. And now our Defilers potentially exposed to Liliana, but we don't have a better choice here. It's gonna be a cruelty. Taking a look at our hand potentially. Can take our Defiler. And how close are we to getting back Squee? Four author cards, so yeah, can't quite play our burn spells and get back Squee. But I can hit for four and keep a bunch of burn spells in hand. So that's 7 damage, and then next turn I can get back Squee. 
Dawn is down to 11. And the Liliana is going to make a sacrifice. Nope, I'm gonna make his discard. Well, these are going upstairs. Stormseeker on top. I'm probably fine to keep. It's equivalent to casting a squee pretty much. I'm tired of your secrets. Opponent discards Titan, which they can reanimate next turn, and a fable. Okay, so can I kill my opponent this turn? They're gonna chump the filer. So I need to come up with uh, four more damage, casting Stormseeker. Dealing one to our opponent will do it. Doesn't matter if we use Phyrexian mana or not. I guess I could have cast both Squee and Reckless Stormseeker here, but uh, one of them is going to be enough. Okay, so our opponent's a turn away from bringing back Titan, but Monoretta gets it done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems keepable. Happy to draw lanes, and happy to draw most spells. Turn 1, Phoenix Chick. Turn 2, Adversary. And turn 3, hopefully Squee. Having the Phoenix Chick to sacrifice the potential Liliana of the Veil is also quite nice, as we can later get it back. Opponent passes, so we're probably gonna lose Squee here. That's okay. Alright, never mind, we get to attack. So your opponent's under a ton of pressure. Maybe a Meat Hook Massacre next turn can get them back into it. But a Liliana looks pretty embarrassing right now. So, yeah, let's go ahead and attack and then probably play the Defiler which will at least survive a massacre. So not quite enough to burn them out with a play with fire. Next turn with a lance, I could cast play with fire and play kicked adversary, getting it back once again. All right, there's a massacre, likely feared. Opponents back up to eight and a Jaya, the draw. So let's try Jaya. One to our opponents. And then see if we can find a land with a minus one. Which we did. Kumano we could also cast using the Defiler's ability. So that's also fine here. So that's essentially 2 damage, and then Adversary is 3 damage total, so more than enough to finish off our opponent here, recovering nicely from the Meat Hook Massacre, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, Hand is keepable, doesn't have any burn spells in it, so no real interaction, but a strong curve including Stormseeker to give Defiler haste. Opponent blue-white. And Phoenix Chick we can maybe cast alongside Defiler, paying two life. So your opponent does appear quite controlling. Could also go with Squee over Stormseeker, just to diversify our threats a little bit in case we don't want to slam down Defiler next turn which would benefit the most from a Stormseeker in play. Also need to worry about a Wandering Emperor, for instance. Although Emperor Exiling Squee would also be annoying. So we'll uh, give Stormseeker a shot. And then next turn maybe play Jaya instead of Defiler, so we don't overextend into a board wipe. Okay, switches to Knight. And we'll try Jaya, can make a Monk and give it plus two plus so and haste. Alright, does Dameful Stroke to counter. Bump Adversary, hit for seven. Let's 
So your opponent needs something like a depopulate to wipe the board. And there it is. Opponent's at 5. So, what's our plan here? Could play Defiler and the Phoenix Chick. Or we can play a Squee alongside Phoenix Chick, although then we don't trigger Defiler. So I'm kind of liking this. So we can potentially finish off our opponents by just dealing damage with Defiler. And we may not even have to turn it sideways to expose it to a Wandering Emperor. Another depopulates. Okay. So Squee should be able to cross a finish line and can later also get back our Phoenix Chick from the graveyard. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems fine. Got a good curve, a bit of interaction. And being on the play always helps when playing an aggressive deck. Turn one Swamp into Cult Conscript, so the aggressive mono black version. Okay, we'll hit for one, pass a turn. And then probably find taking the damage of Conscript, keeping our removal for their next creature. And setting up Squee. Alright, Underdog. I'll uh, play with Fire That. Let them attack first so they can't trade for Squee. And keep Lightning Strike to maybe kill a Trespasser later. Okay, and then as always, hoping to dodge Shieldred at 4 mana. Jaya's also pretty good with Squee, making lots of tokens to set up the minus 2 ability. Another underdog, and a backup Squee. Okay. So I'm not hating Jaya minus 2, killing underdog, and then... Maybe just attack with Squee Phoenix Chick, keep a 1 1 back to protect Jaya, even though they could blitz an underdog to still finish off a Jaya. But um, that's gonna cost them a bit of life too. And they might end up trading for Squee anyways. Yeah, let's try that. And as you can see here, the uh, Jaya trigger can be stacked to happen after we get the extra token from Squee. Put and Dos accept the trade. But now we have a 1 1 back to block a blitzed underdog. And then we've got another Squee to cast anyway, so we're not too sad about that trade. Back up Jaya. So Monk versus minus 1. I think we'll go digging. Even an extra land would be fine. Kumano is probably still better. And then expecting Squee to be removed by another removal spell here if they didn't play anything that turn. But that's okay. And then I should probably leave a token back. Although we have another Jaya, so if our opponent blitzes Underdog, we're probably fine with that. Another opponent would fall to 4 and just be dead to a Lightning Strike at this point. Okay, so their last chance to play Shield Roots. And it may be too late for it anyway. Trespasser's not bad. Can exile Squee. So we could make a Monk, keep Jai around, or minus 1 to cash her in. Although, even if we find a land here, it's not all that exciting. So I think I'm fine just making a Monk. And then we will Lightning Strike Trespasser and uh, play Firebrand. That should leave us in a pretty good position. Alternatively, I can also attack and keep Lightning Strike to go face. But uh, Trespasser is a long-term issue. So let's hit for three. Opponent gets back Conscript, that's fine. 
Firebrand also picks up a counter. So with a land we can activate the ability. Fine to trade my monk for a conscript. And the blitzed underdog's not gonna save them. Firebrand doesn't die to cut down either. So Infernal Grasp pool cost him two life. And then we're not too far from bringing Squee back from the graveyard. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, we're attacking them from too many angles. So Monorats beating the Mono Black aggro deck. But overall, I've been having a pretty good time playing Monorats, with the exception of when we face Shieldred, which is just a nightmare for a red deck to deal with. Often takes two burn spells if you're lucky. Sometimes it just sticks around and will gain the opponent a ton of life. And also 4-5 blocker, which is pretty hard to get past. So you already need to have an established board with maybe a Defiler to have a chance to beat Shieldred. And Mono Black being one of the more popular decks at the moment means I wouldn't necessarily recommend building Monoret until it gets a few more tools to handle a 4-5. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.